In 2001, a sleeping giant awoke in Chicago. In their final season at Old Soldier Field, the Bears added an unforgettable chapter to their storied legacy with a season-long bash beneath the colonnades. What a party! Right here! What a party! Right here! What a party! In the final season of the NFC Central Division, the Bears reached for the prize. Down there, but you're still yeah. for the touchdown. And never let go. He wanted that end zone. Led by a core of young stars, the Bears heralded a new era of Chicago football. With the third greatest single season turnaround in NFL history. Anthony Thomas was rolling thunder right there. They stormed through 13 wins in a season-long game of Can You Top This? Playmaker, take over a football game. Catch it! Yes! 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 I don't know how he did it, but he caught it! Oh, my goodness! Wow. We're kicking their ass. Come on, guys. Let's keep up pumping. Keep up pumping, baby. And the Bears defense holds again. All now, year long. That wow. was the slowest 80-yard interception of a turn. 2001 brought a season unlike any other. For the Bears, it brought a revival that was both inspired and inspiring. They cannot beat us. They cannot beat us. Unless you beat us, Short set, quick throw, slant. Oh, it's going to be intercepted up the goal line. Mike Brown's got it. Oh, oh, That's intercepted the ball. Never give up. Keep fighting. Call and talk. Unbelievable. The Bears began the 2001 season at the home of the Super Bowl champion Ravens. Outside their own locker room, little was expected of the Bears. But in this game, it was difficult to tell which team boasted the most feared defense in football and which was coming off a last place season. The Bears noted their strong performance for one reason. They lost. Something they would not do again for over two months. The streak began a week later when the offense came to life behind quarterback Jim Miller. Over the middle, complete. Marty Rucker rolls his hand. One, two. He gets it to the end zone for a touchdown. Fourth quarter touchdowns by Marty Booker and Marcus Robinson gave the Bears their first win against the Vikings in two years. Going left side, Marcus Robinson reaches up and grabs it into the end zone for a touchdown. Next for the Bears was a visit to Atlanta. Give it to us, we're going to take it. It's our home field. Woo! Drop the set and throws to Mighty Booker. He's going to throw it downfield to Marcus Robinson for the touchdown. There's your number Play three for the Bears. Let's get in. Hey, that play was just a kickstarter, okay? Yeah. That's all that that play was. Yep. I don't want you guys thinking that we got to do both yep. to win this game. In 2002, Chris Chandler will join John Shoup's no bull offense. In 2001, three interceptions and a first-half knockout taught Chandler about the Bears' no-bull defense. Michael Vick fared no better. Oh, 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 yeah, Phil Daniels, the ball yes. is picked up. Mike picked Vick, up Mike. by Brian Erlacher, running down the right sideline. Brian Erlacher's 90-yard dash down the Falcons' sideline sealed the Chicago victory and signaled the arrival of the Bears defense as one of football's elite units. Indeed, the Bears had constructed a perfectly balanced machine around their second year centerpiece. With speed and muscle everywhere on the field, Greg Blatch's defense was so effective that every time the Bears scored at least 13 points, they won. Erlacher finishes the job. The key additions to the D were hard to miss. You better bring me lunch because I'm damn sure going to eat it. Mostly what Ted Washington and Keith Trailer ate was space. Together they made an immovable wall in the middle of the field, forcing offenses to look elsewhere for running room. Ams Brian Robinson and Philip Daniels secured the outside, 
while linebackers Warwick Holdman and Roosevelt Colvin made plays all over the field. Holdman just ripped it out of the hands of David Sloan. Colvin became the first pair of linebackers since Otis Wilson to record double-digit sacks. And Holdman finished with 145 tackles, second only to the man in the middle, who cemented his status as one of the best all-around players in pro football. As comfortable chasing ball carriers outside the pocket as he is sacking them inside it, Erlacher's range on the football field may be limitless. Not that it needs to be. Behind him, cornerback R.W. McQuarters and safety Mike Brown anchored a vastly improved secondary, combining for nearly 200 tackles and eight interceptions. With their team holding on to a tenuous seven-point lead against the Cardinals in week five, Brown and McQuarters combined to make the decisive play of the Bears' third straight and, uh, victory. One week after McWhorter's knockout punch, it was the Bears' offense that appeared down for the count, when wide receiver Marcus Robinson was lost for the season with a knee injury. But this was the day the Bears unleashed an offensive force, the likes of which Chicago had not seen in over a decade. After a quiet first month in the NFL, Anthony Thomas exploded onto the scene setting a Bears rookie record with 188 yards rushing against the Bengals. Anthony Thomas looking for running room and he gets the corner. 35 yard line, 30. Trying to outrace Artro Hawkins. Down to the five, to the left and two. The A train had arrived and the Bears hopped on board for a punishing shutout of the Bengals. A train to the 10, to the five, to the end zone. To their four-game winning streak and their dominating defense, the Bears had added a time-tested offensive ingredient, the power running game. The offensive line of Pro Bowlers Olin Krutz and James Big Cat Williams, along with Chris Valerio, Blake Brockermeyer, and Rex Tucker, started every game together. The welcome sight of 25-year-old center Krutz, number 57, laying down tracks for train number 35, is something Bears fans can look forward to for years to come. Off the left side, has a hole, 15, to the 10, to the 5, touchdown! With nearly 1,200 yards rushing, Thomas arrived like a comet, a Kansas comet, becoming the Bears' first NFL Offensive Rookie of the Year since Gale Sayers in 1965. Hardly a month into the season, the Bears had discovered something special. With a 4-1 and one record, the Bears returned to Soldier Field to play another resurgent power, the 49ers. It was a game that figured to be the stiffest test of the Bears' young season, a game that turned out to be a test of much more. I ain't leaving this place without a victory! I ain't leaving this place without a victory! Soldiers! 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 Early on, the Bears appeared overwhelmed. Is loose, picked up by the 49ers. They're going to run it in. Ryan what Young. the heck happened there? By the midpoint of the third quarter, the Bears trailed by 19. And Jim Miller had left the game with a hip pointer. The door! The Niners might have left just a crack in the door, but Shane Matthews and a couple of Michigan boys pried it open. Get off Anthony Thomas. Get some running room. He's to the 10. Thomas and fellow rookie David Terrell combined for three touchdowns in just over a quarter. Has time. Into the end zone. Terrell has got it for the touchdown. The rookie from Michigan. Terrell's second career touchdown was even more impressive than his first. Matthews running to his left side, looking into the end zone. Throws Terrell. Catch it. Yeah, yeah. With 26 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter, the Bears had drawn to within a two-point conversion of tying the game. Matthews from under center, handoff Anthony Thomas, put his head down, and he is in the two-point conversion!
After 40 minutes, the game was a blowout. After 60, it was a thriller. 16 seconds into overtime, it became a classic. Short set, quick throw, slant. Oh, he's going to be a Shortest overtime in NFL history was one the Bears will long remember. Off the hands of the best player on the 49ers, Terrell Owens and Mike Brown went into the end zone. Thirty two yards to the Bears. Oh, what a game. 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 Right place, right time. Five and one, Chicago Bears. Who would have thought it? Who would have thought it, baby? Even more unthinkable than the comeback was the reprise a week later. With less than a minute remaining in the fourth quarter, the Browns led by two touchdowns. The Bears had them right where they wanted them. Throw Shane in the end zone, touchdown! Marty Booker with a catch. Oh, it's been a strange season, guys. In 28 seconds, the Bears would need to recover an onside kick and score a touchdown just to tie the game. The kick, it bounces it's at the 40, it's, it's up there. in the air, and it's tipped up. I don't know who has it, where is it, and who's got it. It certainly was there for the taking. It's a pointing match. The Bears think they have it. Come on. Yes, there's the Bears football. Oh. We got 24 Woo. seconds and one timeout. Guys. Let's go, boys. Two plays later, the Bears had zero timeouts and stood 34 yards away from the end zone. Matthew stands in the pocket, steps up, heaves the ball, down into the end zone. It's going to be a tip off. second straight week, the Bears were headed to overtime. For the second straight week, overtime was Mike Brown's time. Ball is tipped up by Brian Robinson. Oh, he's going to score another touchdown. Mike Brown for the second consecutive week. In 123 minutes and six seconds, the Bears had authored one of the most dramatic episodes in team history. Now they set out to win a more elusive prize, their first playoff berth since 1994, as Jim Miller returned to lead the Bears in six straight games against division rivals. In the absence of Marcus Robinson, Miller found a new favorite target in Marty Booker. In just his third year, Booker emerged as Chicago's most consistent and versatile receiver, leading the Bears in receptions in 11 of 16 games. He finished the year with 100 catches, the first Bear ever to reach that mark, and he led the team with eight touchdowns. Miller will throw right down the seam. Together, Booker and Miller gave the Bears a credible downfield threat completing eight passes of 25 yards or more. None bigger than those that came against the Bucks in week 10. The Bucks had won five straight against the Bears in Tampa, but now the Bears were leading the division and they needed a win to stay on top. It was Miller and Booker who made the difference, connecting for three touchdowns. The first, a 28-yard strike, gave the Bears their first lead of the game. The second came early in the third quarter. Miller going up top, down to the sideline. Booker is open. Peter can catch over the shoulders for the touchdown. On their next offensive play from scrimmage, Miller hit Booker again. This time for 66 yards. Chicago's longest offensive play of the year. Bang, bang, 11 seconds, 66 yards on the deep ball to Book. His 60th pitch of the year. His third touchdown. The Bears had their first win in Tampa in six years, and they were back on top of the NFC Central. Go, 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 go. 
But to stay there, the Bears would have to beat the Vikings on the road without Anthony Thomas. Turn, hand off to Leon Johnson. Bucks into the secondary. Rising to the challenge, James Allen and Leon Johnson, number 32, combined for nearly 150 rushing yards and a touchdown. And the 10 and knocked out of bounds. For the second time in the season, the defense shut down the potent Viking offense. Minnesota entered the red zone only once, with just over five minutes remaining in the game. The Vikings had not gone without a touchdown in six years. But on three Viking tries from the one, the Bears' defense held. And the Vikes' streak of games with a touchdown ended at 98. Week 12 found the Bears going for their ninth victory against the winless Lions. But somehow the Lions nearly stole the game. With the Bears clinging to a 13-10 lead and nearly four minutes remaining, the D came through with the kind of big play they made all year and stopped the Lions' drive. Detroit threatened again on their last possession. But Jason Hansen's third miss of the day saved the win for the Bears. It wasn't pretty, but the Bears had won three straight division games and were still in first place. But with a second win against the Bucks, they could secure a playoff berth. Do they realize what's at stake today? We're going for our 10th victory and, and get in the playoffs. The defense met the challenge, forcing four turnovers and holding the Bucks to a field goal. When the Bears needed something extra to prevent a touchdown that could have tied the game, the secondary delivered. Oh, Chicago built a 20-3 lead by the mid-third quarter with touchdown catches by Marty Booker and Fred Baxter. With the game in hand, the Bears unleashed Anthony Thomas, who piled up 146 yards and a touchdown in the second half. The Bears had made the playoffs for the first time since 1994, but they had the division still to win. And in week 15, they used a little special teams trickery to beat the Redskins. Trailing 13 to 10 in the fourth quarter, the Bears lined up in field goal formation. But punter Brad Maynard took the snap and rolled out, then lofted a 28-yard pass downfield. The unlikely receiver was linebacker Brian Erlacher, who caught the ball and ran it in for the winning touchdown. They called it the Ninja, and it was the kind of play that special teams coach Mike Sweatman cooked up all year long. Maynard was a solid asset, setting a Bears record with 36 punts downed inside the 20 and only seven touchbacks, supported by cover men like Bobby Howard. Pro bowler Larry Wiggins and long snapper Patrick Mantle. In only his second year, kicker Paul Edinger was equally reliable, setting Bears single season records for field goal accuracy and distance. In week 16 at Detroit, it was the offense that hit the ground running scoring touchdowns on their first two possessions, with Miller completing six passes for 140 yards on the two drives. The score was 14 to nothing with five minutes left in the first quarter. After that, it was all defense, with Walt Harris scoring on the Bears' third interception of the day. It's a foot race to the end zone. Touchdown! The Bears had won home field advantage for their first playoff game, but they had yet to clinch the division. To do that, they would have to beat the Jaguars in the last regular season game at Old Soldier Field. Going into the game, the Bears had already achieved the biggest turnaround in franchise history. But Dick Geron's team had bigger goals in mind, and the Bear defense played like it dominating the Jaguars to end the year with the fewest points allowed in the NFL. But what everyone will remember most is Keith Trailer's tip, tip, and rumble. And he's rumbling. Forty has it on. Pass it off. Forty. Trailer looking for help. The big ugly with a big, big interception and rumble down the right side. For only the fourth time ever, the Bears had won 13 games. 
and for the first time in 10 years, they had won the NFC Central Division title. That was a three-hour window, man. We went right through it, huh? We went right through that window. I don't know anybody that deserves it more than you guys. Honest to God, I don't know anybody that deserves it more than you. On January 19, 2002, the Bears said goodbye to old Soldier Field. And sadly, goodbye to a season that surpassed all expectations but their own. This was not the Bears' day. But a game that meant so much mattered less to the NFL's Coach of the Year than a valiant team that never stopped fighting. Yes, Jerry's gone! 25, 20, turns out the Jets are 10! Another defensive touchdown! And the Bears are going to take the lead again! One could pardon the Bears and their fans for wanting their season to last forever. But the bitterness of a playoff loss will fade for a team whose future is bright with promise. In 2002, the Bears will make a new temporary home down the road in Champaign and a new permanent home in the NFC North Division. Should they continue along the path they traveled in 2001, the Bears will do just fine wherever they play. And when the Bears return to Chicago in 2003, the historic colonnades will stand behind a new soldier field. The Bears' revival in the Windy City has only just begun. The future looks bright indeed.